We did one related to the accounts receivable, pulling in a receivable or invoice that was entered in the following period, but for which the work was done before the cutoff date. So to see that, let's look at some subledgers as well that we have to be concerned with because there's going to be a subledger for the receivable and the inventory we also have to deal with and be careful of, mindful about anytime we make these kind of transactions to those type of accounts. Let's go to the tab to the right. What happens if you don't, if you're not careful, right click and duplicate. The bookkeeper gets mad at you. That's what happens and you mess up their whole thing and then that's not good. So let's go to the reports on the left hand side, close up the hamburger, scroll down and we're looking for who owes you. Let's look at the customer balance detail report for the detail on the customer on the AR. So that's one report that we have to be dealing with where we saw down below, we added another customer for ZZZ down here to put our uh, adjusting entry in place with a journal entry, which is unusual because all other open transactions are in place from basically invoices generally or payments if there was a deposit, which we'll deal with in the future. Right click on the tab again, duplicate again. Let's do the same for the inventory report. So I'm gonna go down to the reports on the left-hand side, close up the hand boogie, type in the inventory. We're looking for the valuation summary report. Let's do that as of the end of March, 03-31-23, run it. And the reason I did it for the end of March is because we entered a transaction. If I look at my flow chart, we have an invoice that's usually the form when using an accrual based method when sales is recorded. It is the form when QuickBooks will record sales. But we can imagine a situation where the invoice wasn't entered in the period the work was actually done. Easiestly seen when you're talking about like a, a job cost system where you have to track the time and then enter the invoice. Maybe possibly the invoice being entered then after the cutoff even though the work was done before the cutoff and therefore on an accrual basis method, we should pull that revenue back into the period it was earned rather than when the invoice was entered. That's what we're doing here. So last time we entered an invoice after the cutoff date in March, we did an invoice that has inventory related to it to add another level of complexity. And then we made a journal entry to pull that, that invoice back into the current period not by entering an invoice, but with an adjusting entry. Now we're gonna reverse that entry so that we're in the proper period in the following month and we don't mess up the accounting department.